Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I start by stating on record that I support this motion, and if you look at the names of those members of parliament who have appended their signatures uh, for the removal or initiation of the process of removal of this cabinet secretary, I am number 57. But Mr. Speaker, I want to just mention a few things. Number one, National Assembly, Mr. Speaker, has a responsibility. And this responsibility is given to us by the people of Kenya through cons the constitution that we have today. Article 95, Mr. Speaker, 5 of the constitution, and I want to read, gives the National Assembly the responsibility to review the conduct of the of in, in office of the president, the deputy president, and other state officers, including cabinet secretaries, and initiates the process of removing them from office. So, Mr. Speaker, what we are embarking on today is one of those cardinal responsibilities given to National Assembly by the people of Kenya to review the conduct of a cabinet secretary, one mythical uh, Turi, to hold office with a view to initiate the process of removing him. But Mr. Speaker, I want to plead with those members of parliament who think they want to save Mythical Linturi. If I were you, if you love this cabinet secretary, the more reason you should vote for this motion. Mr. Speaker, today we are not removing Mythical Linturi. By this motion, we are not removing Mythical Linturi. If you look at, if you read, Mr. Speaker, Article 152 of the Constitution, which gives details of how to remove a cabinet secretary from office. It states that if a motion, it states that a member of the National Assembly like Honorable Jack Wamboka has done, supported by at least one quarter of all the members of the Assembly, may propose a motion requiring the President to dismiss a cabinet secretary. That is the motion we are dealing with today. And the grounds are stated. But Mr. Speaker, the, article, the same, same article goes ahead to mention that if this motion is supported by at least one third this morning of the members of the National Assembly, then the Assembly shall appoint a select committee comprises of, comprising of 11 of its members to investigate the matter. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the document presented to us by Honorable uh, Wamboka, the only way justice can be done to this cabinet secretary is for this house to push this matter forward so that a select committee of this house will have an opportunity to look at this, the details as presented. How else, Mr. Speaker, will we even know that this telephone call was made by Honorable Mithika Linturi if we, do not, if we don't give opportunity to this house to appoint a select committee to go and scrutinize get to the bottom of these details and bring a report to us. If they find that these matters are not substantiated, if the committee shall find that these matters are not properly substantiated, then the matter will end there. The committee will report back to the House and the matter will die. But if the matters will have been found to have been substantiated, then this House will proceed to take another vote, Mr. Speaker, where even before we take the vote, we will present Honorable Mithika Linturi with an opportunity to address this parliament and defend himself. That is the time we will know that he is innocent or is not innocent. But stopping this process at this stage would be reckless, would be careless, and would demonstrate a house that does not know its responsibility. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to also add that it is not just on grounds of gross violation of the provisions of this constitution that you would initiate a process of removing a cabinet secretary. It is not only on the grounds of where serious reasons of believing that the cabinet secretary has committed a crime under the national and international law that a process like this would be initiated. This process would even be initiated if we have a reason to believe that there is gross misconduct on the part of the cabinet secretary. And Mr. Speaker, based on the evidence that Honorable Amboka has presented to this House, and particularly I'm concerned about the issues of National Cereals and Produce Board. Mr. Speaker, 
the first question that I would ask those who want to oppose this motion. Are you telling us that National Cereals and Produce Board would go ahead with the budgetary provision given by this House as proposed by the Cabinet Secretary, presented to us, we give out money, this money goes and buys Kokoto instead of fertilizer given to our farmers, and only whistleblowers are able to know, yet we have a, 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 a ministry which has a cabinet secretary heading that ministry, and that cabinet secretary is ignorant. But Mr. Speaker, what worries me more is the evidence that is produced before us through a letter that is written by a lawyer, Ahmed Nasir Mohammed, and clearly Ahmed Nasir is telling us that Mythical in two even attempted to subvert justice by trying to, to dictate or order this particular farm, uh, uh, factory to go and issue a statement. And the evidence is there. The telephone number is there. Calls were made. Safari can, 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 can confirm the same. And that is why I want to plead with this House, Mr. Speaker, that this is a matter that we cannot treat casually. This is a matter of hunger. It is a matter of food. It is a matter of food security in this country. It is a matter that can bring this country to anarchy, as the minority leader said. We must show responsibility. You are elected by your people to come and speak for them. They don't have a voice. They cannot talk to Mythical Inturi. It is you who can speak to Mythical Inturi. It is you who can speak to William Ruto who appointed Mythical Inturi. And when these cabinet secretaries were appointed, Mr. Speaker, I remember saying that this is going to go in the records of history as the most incompetent cabinet. And you can already see that some people are protecting Mr. Speaker, Mythical Inturi, and claiming that he was ignorant of what was happening in National Cereals and Produce Board. Mr. Speaker, if Mr. Linturi yes, can be ignorant order. of what is happening at the National Cereals order, and Produce please. Board, then what can be he, he be ignorant about? Is this is an incompetent... Order, a point of order. Mr. Speaker, I raise pursuant to Standing Order Number 83 as read together with Standing Order Number 91 on the accuracy of information that is being provided by my very good friend, the Honorable Bombardi. Mr. Speaker, is it in order for the, for the member of parliament, for the nominated member of parliament to claim that he had already made up his mind from the time the cabinet secretaries were nominated or appointed that they were incompetent so that his information that he had at that time, which he never gave us in the house, when we were approving Mythical Linturi, is it in order, Mr. Speaker, for somebody to redact information which we thought he had or which he thinks he should have had? The accuracy of his information, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, is in fact one thing. He is alleging that, in, in fact, the conduct of the president is not an issue here. In fact, if he wants to bring a substantive motion with the issue of the conduct, he should not mention the president. It is not part of the motion that is in the House. The motion is in the House is with regard to the Honorable Mithikal Nduri, who was his colleague in the 13th Parliament. Mr. Speaker, is it in order for him to claim that he had this information, but he never gave to the House? That is very misleading, Mr. Speaker. Why do I not? Mr. Speaker, you know Honorable Jeb Konga could be older than me by age but he is not older than me in this house, and I don't know why he's rusting so early. You still have time to be here, so don't rust. Please just remain active, focus on what I say. Mr. Speaker, I was up reminding the president, we are appealing to the president as the appointing authority. That is what we are doing here. The president has to remove this cabinet secretary from office. We are speaking to him. We are telling him this is one of your incompetent cabinet secretaries. Please hear us. Listen to us. I said this when these cabinet secretaries were being approved. It is on record. I even use words that I don't want to repeat today. So, Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying in a nutshell, Mr. Speaker, as I wind up, 
I want to plead with this house. Please allow this motion to go through so that we can appoint a select committee of 11 members to interrogate this matter, look at it into details, look at the evidence adduced, so that if there is no evidence, we will let Linturi continue running the ministry. If there is evidence, let us get him out, get another Kenyan, even if we want a Kenyan from that region where he comes from. There are so many competent Kenyans from that region, that county, that part of the, the, the country. Mr. Speaker, I want to plead and persuade, including the majority leader, support this motion so that we can have these matters settled in a professional manner through the committee of this house. Mr. Speaker, I support.